Good morning world from Jeff's Little Engine Service. What we have here is a Yard Machines tiller, front tine tiller, 139cc OHV. So hopefully you all don't have one of these. Uh, if you do, I feel sorry for you. And it's probably time for you to get familiar with these engines because you'll be working on it. The customer says it won't start. So yard machines are built by MTD. How do I put this nicely? Well, these engines are a piece of crap. My brother had a lawnmower with this style engine on it and uh, I had to clean out that carburetor every spring. Choke, make sure it's in the on position. Let's see if I can get it to start. So I'm assuming we have something wrong with the carburetor. More than likely it just needs the fuel system cleaned out, carburetor cleaned out, new spark plug, that sort of thing. Let's check it out. I'm going to uh, take off this cover here. Looks like the air filter is still good. So you have your two nuts here. And you have one bolt here. And that just pulls off, as you can see. All right, now we can get to the carburetor. Let's start by draining the gas. Just give her a little twist here, and that usually helps get it off. Pry it off like that. Sometimes you can just pry it off. And let the gas tank drain out. And this will take a couple minutes. I'll get back to you. Okay, let's try and take this carburetor off of here. Looks like, uh, let's take that piece off don't lose it and yeah if you pull the carburetor out a bit you can get back to this area and what you have to do is oh that is frozen yeah see this little black piece here is supposed to rotate back and forth but it is locked up. Oh, they're unable to get it to move. You have to get it to move so you can take this linkage out. If you spray a little bit, a little carburetor cleaner on here. And that should loosen it up. Hey, that sucker is stuck. So we'll fix that when we get it out, but for now we have to rotate it all the way clockwise. And that's the position where you can bend this linkage enough. Try to do it where you can see what I'm doing. And it just pulls out like that. It just goes in and out once you get it at the right angle. And if you're careful, you can just take off the spring here. The carburetor is loose except for your choke linkage. And what you want to do is just continue to pull it out. And you can get it off. And if you rotate the carburetor this way, it slides right out. There you go. Let's take a look inside this thing. Okay, you're going to get some gas that comes out. 
This is my 10 millimeter socket here. Take off the float bowl. And this will tell us a lot what the inside of the carburetor looks like. Confirm our suspicion that it's plugged up. Yeah, it's not real bad. But it's dirty enough, I'm sure things are plugged up. Oh yeah, definitely there's a lot of stuff in there. So pull out the pin, that's your float pin. And if you turn it like this, oh dang, that sucker is frozen in there. Normally this just lifts right out, but it's gooed up so much it won't come out. Let me try a little bit of uh, carburetor cleaner here. This is about the only time I use carburetor cleaner. So if you get this stuff in the right areas, it can loosen, loosen you up. I'll spray a little bit of this down into the hole here. Dang. Don't want to pry too hard. Let me see. Let me get a pick. Oh, there we go. A little help from a pick. I think things have finally loosened up in there from the carburetor cleaner. Yeah, look at all that stuff on there. Definitely needed to be cleaned up. So we're going to have to take out the slow jet here. Just clean up that side of the carburetor a bit. Now you can see the float bowl. You can see the float bowl gasket stayed up in there. So we'll just leave it. Try not to get any carburetor cleaner on there because they can swell up and then you have to replace them. Yeah, see there's a lot of lot of built up residue on there that needs to be cleaned up. So I'm going to get a toothbrush and some carburetor cleaner and get to work cleaning all this up. But first I want to take out the main jet and the nozzle. So spray some carburetor cleaner in there to loosen it up. Now this procedure can be a little sketchy because you don't want to strip it out in there. You see that's your main jet up in there and it's a flat screwdriver that goes in there but not all screwdrivers fit. So this is a special one. You can see how it's shaped but you can make your own. That gets down in there. Sometimes I use this long one, which can do the job, but it looks like this one's going to be the best screwdriver for the job. So just make sure you have a good secure grip before you try to loosen it, because if you strip that out, you're gonna be hating life, and you'll probably have to replace your carburetor. doesn't help that it's only about 35 degrees out here. Hopefully I don't break anything. Yeah, that, that worked. The nuts and bolts start to get brittle in the winter time. The temperature gets too low. Just kind of sucks. So, you should be able to see inside this carburetor that nozzle there. You're going to have to push that down some cases it sometimes it falls right out but I think we're gonna have to get a screwdriver in there push down on it to get it out of there sometimes this can be a tough job especially when they're gummed up like this so I'll spray a little bit of cleaner up into there let it sit for a moment and see we See, we almost have the main jet out of there. It usually comes out with a little bit of coaxing, just like that. 
The nozzle, however, or the emulsion tube is still up in the carburetor. And you can see it in through there, hopefully. It's just a brass tube, about an inch and a half long. I'm going to continue to use some carburetor cleaner to try to get that emulsion tube to loosen up because they can be a pain in the rear to get out of there sometimes. Sometimes you'll have to use a pick and go in and push down on it. Sometimes a screwdriver works. I'm going to try a screwdriver first. Oh boy, yeah, that sucker's in there. Oh boy, it doesn't want to come out. Dang it. So, I might be able to get a straight pick up in there. Just kind of start wiggling it a little bit, working it loose. push down on it now. Oh yeah, that helped. Woo, it just came shooting out of there. Slow motion. Oh yeah, that helped. Woo, it just came shooting out of there. And here's what that piece looks like. And if you look real close, you can see it's pretty gummed up too. And there's about 15 little holes all along the sides and up, of course, through the middle of it that need to be cleaned out. So let's do that. And see all those tiny little holes? Everyone needs to be cleaned out, as well as up through the middle here. And on the main jet, you'll just want to make sure that it's clear up through the center. And as I look up through the middle of this one, I can clearly see that it's plugged, so you need to stick uh, some wire down in there to loosen that up. And here's a little jar of carburetor cleaner I have. I'm going to put everything in here for now, for a few hours. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Let all the metal, let all those components soak. And to get out your slow jet, you will have to remove your idle screw. Just look to see how far it's poking out the other end so you know how far to screw it back in when you're going back together. This component is very fragile, so be very careful. It basically just pushes in and pops out, but it's very easy to break. And there's very small little O-rings on here that you want to be careful not to damage. And I would not spray, recommend spraying uh, carburetor cleaner on this because it can destroy those tiny little O-rings. You can see you have a passageway down in there. And there's actually a passageway up through the middle of this jet. So we need to make sure that that's cleared out. It's very, very small. But if it's plugged, it'll affect the way your engine starts and how it runs. So this is the type of wire I used to poke up into these jets. It's copper, so it won't scratch the brass jet. And it's about the only thing small enough to get up into some of these, these holes. You know, the hole that I'm clearing out is so small in there, you can barely even see it with the naked eye. I'm not joking. That's why I have to use this tiny, tiny piece of wire to get through there. But I just want to make sure to spend some time cleaning out this really well because that's such a small hole in there. It's very quick to get plugged up. It's one of the reasons why these engines um, 
have the problems they do is because that tiny little hole, microscopic hole, gets plugged up and it will not start. Happens pretty much every year to these engines, at least in my part of the country, with the ethanol fuel and the weather. Okay, I finally got this to poke through. It took a while, but you can see it when it pokes through. It, you can see it when it pokes through through the little window there. Okay, nice and cleared out. Let's move on. Make sure to clean all this up. See, it comes off pretty easily with some carburetor cleaner and a toothbrush. I also brought a Q-tip to get down into these holes here. You don't want to put anything sharp down into your float valve hole. You can damage it really easily. It takes a while, but you can get it all off. And you want to get this as clean as possible. Trust me on this one. You don't want to put your slow jet into it because the tiny little O-rings on it will swell up and uh, you'll have to replace them and it's impossible to find them. So. so on your needle valve here, there's a spring on there so you just push down and it pulls right out. Be careful not to lose that spring. It's always a good idea to replace your float needle valve. So you can see we're still kind of locked up here. So that's the plate it actuates and there's a rod that goes down through. So if you can get some cleaner down in there, you can usually just work it loose. Yeah, it's coming loose now. There we go. And you'll want to clean out up into there, make sure there's no gunk up in there. Okay, so the carburetor is all cleaned out. I have the jets and the nozzle, the emulsion tube here all cleared out. The, so you can see the holes in there. I have the hole cleared out through the main jet. So it goes in like this. Be careful not to over tighten this. You can strip things out pretty easily. I'm going to reuse this float valve for now. I cleaned it off really good. I didn't see any damage on the rubber tip. Uh, if you could see a groove in it or any chunks taken out, then it's worn. But for now, we're going to reuse it. It's easy enough to replace. If we have to do that, we can replace it uh, with the carburetor on the machine. So we'll put our little spring on here. And, uh, yeah, I'll try to show you how it pops into place without losing that spring. There we go. So the spring stays underneath like that. And I'll make sure to clean this out one last time. We want a nice smooth seat in there. You don't ever want to poke anything hard down in here. You can scratch the seat and then it won't seal. Just like that. Alright. Float bowl o-ring back in place. And I managed to get 
most of the rust out of the inside of the float bowl, so we're looking good there. I don't think it really matters which way you put this, but uh, in this position you can get to it easy to drain it when it's on the machine. Not too tight, you can break it. That should be good. All right now to put in the slow jet, we're good to go back in. To get it to slide into here, I usually put some lubricant on it. We just pushed into place, but it does have a flat. If you see, there's a flat spot on each side, so you want the flat spot to go up against the, the carburetor. You can see the spot for it there. So we line it up like that, and it just pops into place. Now we can put the idle adjustment screw back in. And if I remember right, that's about how much was sticking out. Okay, so we put this on the same way we took it off. Choke now. Push it into place, line up this back throttle linkage here, let's push it, just pushes down, and we'll reattach the spring here too, oh boy, there we go, alright, Looks like our fuel line is fairly clean on the inside, so that's always a good sign. Okay, don't forget to plug this back in. And this gasket, spacer, let's see which way does this go, like this. Always tighten these down first. Tighten these babies down evenly. And like I say, I usually tighten these first just to make sure things are lined up. Not too tight, you can break it, but tight enough to cinch it down on all the gaskets. And I know I have a clean gas tank too. It's been sitting out in the sun and blowing all the stuff out of it. So we're ready for gas. Okay. Let's see if this baby starts. Choke is on. We're on here. All right, let's see what happens. 